Hi, welcome to Weekend Review, where we look at some of the recent stories making headlines and some of the news we have coming up in the Oklahoma. And I'm Phil O'Connor, the Live Enterprise Director here at the Oklahoma. And I'm joined today by some of our usual suspects. We've got Deputy Sports Editor Darnell Mayberry, Reporter Ben Felder, and the esteemed Business Editor Don McCoy. So, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all again. Um, let's go right to the story that everybody's talking about, Darnell. So, Russell is coming back. Yep. Great day for Oklahoma City. It went from July 4th, Kevin Durant signing, announcing that he was signing with the Golden State Warriors, to August 4th, Russell Westbrook making a huge, huge decision and re-signing, renegotiating his contract to stay here in Oklahoma City. Uh, just a great day for Oklahoma City, a great day for the Thunder franchise. It was a stabilitating or stabilizing, excuse me, a stabilizing signing for the Thunder in the sense that the last couple of times I was on here we were talking about the possibility of them having to trade him if they didn't get that commitment. They got the commitment yesterday. And Don, people were lining up yesterday for the announcement, right? I oh yeah. Well, you got invited. I did get invited, uh, but I'm, I'm a season ticket holder and the, the, the Thunder invited me to come down. It's, a, it's kind of a busy time of day for me, but we had a lot of people streaming out of our office to go down there. And as you can see from the video, there were a lot of folks at the Chesapeake uh, yesterday because they were people really got fired up about this. And we had reporters covering that story left and right uh, from our sports desk and from the live news team. So you see video that we shot on the site there. Uh, Darnell, going forward, we have a new Mr. Oklahoma City, I guess, sort of. I mean, he's taken the mantle. I thought there was a line that Barry had in his uh, column today that was really interesting. I said, I think it said something he'd chosen to climb the mountain. Uh, as instead of go down the hill. Instead of, yeah. yeah. What is it? What is it? I mean, in terms of stability for the organization and stuff, what does it mean to have him here for that time frame? Well, he's a top five player in the NBA, and you just don't replace those guys. So to get his commitment for another two seasons, um, this coming season and the following season, it's huge. It stabilizes the franchise. It allows you to then go out and try to get pieces to surround him with, and you're still going to be uh, one of the better teams in the NBA as opposed to having to rebuild. So. Uh, just to have that commitment was huge for the franchise, it was huge for the city uh, in terms of the fan base now has something to rally around. You don't have to go out there and root for players that you've never heard of or, or go through a rebuild where you're just relying on getting high draft picks. Now you have a superstar player in this league that you can go out and root for every night. And we also, for the first time, are starting to hear something from some of the players about Kevin's departure. I understand that Ennis Canner <laughs> tweeted some stuff. Uh, I think Russell made a comment that sort of was directed in that in, in that direction. What are, what are they saying? What are you hearing? Well, Ennis Cantor seems to like the word traitor. Uh, his words, not ours, but uh, Kevin Durant made the decision that he felt was best for him. Uh, Ennis Cantor is having some fun. I think he's really having more fun on Twitter uh, with his Kevin Durant comments. He's got different emojis that he's using. Um, and just really lighthearted fun. But I think deep down you can tell that these guys were disappointed that Kevin made that decision. Russell Westbrook yesterday took the high road. He was all class and, and his comments about Kevin Durant, they were his first public comments about Kevin Durant and his decision. Uh, and he basically just said, you know, look, what's next? What do we do now to make ourselves a better team, uh, a better franchise? And it's about looking forward and not looking back on what Kevin Durant did. Yeah. Now, Ben, uh Russell isn't the only one signing a big contract this That's week right, in Oklahoma yeah. City, so uh, school superintendent Aurora Laura is going to be sticking around for a little yeah, while. Yeah, she also signed a three-year contract here in Oklahoma City. So the superintendent of Oklahoma City Public Schools, uh, she had been uh, named the permanent superintendent last month. The details of her contract were released yesterday. Uh, $220,000 base salary, that's $20,000 less than the uh, previous superintendent, Rob New. Uh, but some differences in the contract. Uh, you may remember that several months ago there was uh, a lot of controversy related to New's departure. Um, it wasn't an easy or quick departure. The board and New uh, had a lot of uh, discussions about you know, what kind of you know, salary or payout he was going to get. Well, this contract allows the board and uh, Aurora to depart. Um, without having to worry about paying out the rest of her contract. It also removed a lot of the fringe benefits that uh, New had received, so things like a car allowance. Um, she'll be paying you know, the, the normal rate for her insurance in terms of out-of-pocket expenses as other high-level executives are for the district. I talked to one school board member who said really her contract just mirrors those other high-level executives in the district, and that was important. The other thing that this contract has is a longevity bonus. Um, stability has been something that the district has struggled with with the superintendent position. She's the 11th since the year 2000 to enter the job. If she reaches her, her second year anniversary, she'll receive a bonus of $10,000. If she reaches year number three, 
it'll be a $15,000 bonus. And uh, really, out of the last 12 superintendents, we've only seen three that would have been eligible for that three-year three -year bonus. So she now becomes the highest paid superintendent in the state, is that right? Yeah, and New was the highest paid uh, before her. So when you look at base salary, um, you know, a lot of superintendent positions, they have maybe other perks and stuff that you can add in there. But she's, she's by, an, you know, by far the, the highest paid in the state. Uh, you know, I was trying to take a look and see whether or not some of these longevity bonuses or these retention bonuses are common. They're becoming more and more common, uh, especially in urban school systems. Uh, Deborah Gist, the superintendent of Tulsa, she, uh, who, who just came on uh, not too long ago, she has a longevity bonus of $75,000 if she were to reach uh, her three-year anniversary. Doesn't get paid quite as much as, as Aurora does. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the school board is looking for a superintendent that they could have at the, at the helm for, for, for quite a while. Great. Now, Don, we're also seeing some big numbers thrown around in the ener energy industry this week, right, with some earnings reports out? Right. It's earnings season, and we were seeing uh, second quarter earnings for all of our uh, local publicly traded energy companies. And the, the big three here in Oklahoma City, Devon, Chesapeake, Continental Resources, all reported losses for the quarter. Uh, Devon and Chesapeake both lost more than a billion dollars. That's in the quarter. billion with a B. Billion with a B. Uh, and then and then Continental, whose losses uh, have not been as great as those other companies in preceding quarters, they report a loss of $119 million in the quarter. Now you have to sort of look at this in context. A lot of these losses continue to be write-downs that they have to take for uh, the value of the oil that's in the, and the gas that's in the ground, which uh, particularly the oil has, has fallen. And they continue to struggle with the oil prices, which which have dipped recently, back down close to forty dollars after being up as so high as fifty. Uh, but we're continuing to see a little bit of optimism, more and more creep in. They're starting to increase uh, their budgets for drilling and exploring. Uh, they're they're seeing these losses that are kind of starting to mitigate a little bit. So we're we're seeing some positive things despite these massive losses that. Uh, that a lot of our, our paper losses that, that are for products that they haven't even produced yet. And what's the outlook going forward? Are they still optimistic that by the end of the year we'll see an upturn in oil prices or is that? Yeah, I think generally most people in the industry expect that uh, they think 40 is about as low as oil is probably going to go for a while. I mean, it might dip down a little bit below that, but they think that's kind of a floor that's been set and the ceiling that they're looking at. I mean, this still is going to be a, a slow slog back to prices that, that, that make everybody profit or, or almost everybody profitable. It's a little easier for these large companies to be profitable at cheaper prices. One of the things that our Adam Wilmoth, our energy editor, wrote about recently was the fact that as they've gone through these massive cutbacks and, and dropping, uh, idling a lot of rigs, they've become much more efficient at producing uh, you know, what it costs to produce a, a barrel of oil is getting cheaper and cheaper and those are savings that they're going to be able to carry forward as these prices hopefully rebound back to something that, that they find more reasonable. Gotcha. So this weekend, also speaking of savings, expect to be a big weekend for shoppers, right? Right. It's a tax-free uh, holiday weekend uh, today, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if you go to a local retailer in Oklahoma and you buy clothing, generally it's mostly clothing uh, that costs less than $100, you should not have to pay any sales tax on that. And we found that a lot of people uh, get a lot of back to school shopping done, uh, you know, go and buy the socks and the underwear and the school uniforms and those kinds of things. Uh, and you can save a little bit of money. You can save, you know, seven, eight, nine percent, depending on what your local sales tax is. I wonder if you got like a KD jersey and then you got the sales tax off, would it be free? I did see. Wasn't somebody <laughs> selling a KD jersey for like 99 cents somewhere? I don't know. You can. I'm uh, thinking, okay, with the sales tax taken off, I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Is it so. worth 99 cents? <laughs> is, that a, is that a bargain? That's a sports question, but <laughs> I'm not sure we want to get all into that today. So, well, listen, this is the kind of stuff that you can only get in the Oklahoman. Um, this is the kind of stuff that we have every day on our website, every day in the newspaper. Pick one up. Think about subscribing. It's a great value. Um, great to see you guys all again. I'm sure we'll be gathering again soon. Uh, good to see you all again as well. See you soon as well, too.